Welcome to SoCalTech Interviews, where we talk with the entrepreneurs, investors, and others in Southern California startup and technology community. Our interview today is with Michael McCrary, CEO and founder of Pure Spectrum, a company in the marketing research area. I'm Ben Quo, founder and editor of SoCalTech.com. Hi, I'm Michael McCrary. I'm the founder and CEO of Pure Spectrum. And what is Pure Spectrum? Pure Spectrum is a uh, platform for the market research and intelligence community. A um, little bit obscure companies that are seeking consumer insights, market research, uh, work with us to actually collect that data and at times analyze that data. And how did you start the company? Uh, so I started the company beginning of 2016, right around January. Uh, it was just me. I was starting off, um, had always wanted to be an entrepreneur, always thought about doing it, and finally came to a point in my life and career where I felt like I could, could actually um, take the risk to start it. Had socked away enough acorns to be able to you know, not make money for a year or two um, and was able to attract some um, early investors that were strategic. So starting in 2016, it was just me and a notepad. Uh, I was down at Hub 101, um, which is part of Cal Lutheran's uh, School of Management and just kind of knew from time in the industry that I wanted to do something that I was familiar with, had some expertise in, and uh, just got started, just me. And uh, from there, you know, was writing my own checks, you know, spending my own money, uh, or, you know, had to find developers, had to find designers, had to find people to help actually create a platform because I'm not a technical founder, I'm more of a business founder. And, um, you know, that was just the very early beginnings was deciding to do it, taking the risk and uh, writing your own checks. And then, um, you know, did raise a little bit of capital in that first year, um, ended up raising yeah, about 1.6 million from strategics within my industry. And that closed about six, seven months after I started, um, had kind of started that process right on the time I started the business. Um, but uh, yeah, that's how we got started. And talk about um, t talk about the decision process. I mean, uh, what were you doing before that kind of prepped you to say, hey, it's time to go start my own company. Was there anything that, that triggered that? I mean, you, you mentioned you, you saved up enough money and willing to take the risk, but what was it about this industry that you said, hey, it's, it's time for me to start a company here? Yeah, I think I, I was born in, as, uh, into a family of entrepreneurs, um, not necessarily tech entrepreneur or this type of business, but uh, my parents had never really worked for anybody. So me working in an industry, first starting off in advertising and media, and then getting into data and insights, um, you know, there was always this desire and itch to want to, you know, start my own business. But I was never ready, right? It's kind of always, uh, I think the phrase is, I was a entrepreneur. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to try it. Um, and ultimately, after like the last five, 10 years of my career, I was in executive positions, very senior leadership positions in companies within the industry, within the particular discipline that I, I really understood and liked. So it just, it just came time, right? It was like, how much experience do I have? How much risk tolerance do I have? Do I really want to go take another job or do I really want to try to start a business now? So I, I call it kind of like the, the curve of your ability to do it and your risk tolerance. Um, so it was just, I don't know, it was just a, a moment where I was like, I'm not going to go get a job. I'm going to try to start a business. Um, and, and that was, I guess I could say I wish I did it earlier, but I don't know that earlier would have worked because it, all the experience that I got over the five, 10 years before are totally necessary to be able to do what I'm doing now. I'm glad I didn't do it later, right? Because I think the you know it takes time, right? And ultimately, that's probably if people say what's the most important decision you have to make, it's like don't take a job, right? You like take the risk and do it. And figuring out that time and that like risk factor profile is is probably the hardest thing. Now, now you mentioned you uh, you got funding for your startup from strategic investors. 
Uh, talk about the process of that. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are intimidated saying, how do I go get funding? Do I talk to angels? Do I talk to, to venture capitalists? Um, talk about the, your approach with the strategic investors. Yeah, it's probably not traditional. I didn't really have to go through a formal process of going friends and family because I was funding the original five, six months of it. Um, you know, literally taking money out of my bank account, moving to you know, company bank account and, and just sweeping it in and pushing it out. Um, so I didn't really go friends and family. I didn't really go angels. I was the angel in the beginning. Um, even then, working with the companies that made the investment were people that I knew, right? They happened to be either private equity backed larger companies or um, my first boss and his group. They were, they had a kind of a fund where they were funding new items. Um, it was still probably, other than deciding to do the business, that was also a really stressful process. Um, one is, you know, I did a couple of, you know, angel investor like group things and I didn't know how much I wanted to raise. Um, formulating the, these multi-year forecasts, which are all pretty much made up, right? Like, like <laughs> I, you really don't know how much revenue you're going to do or how to model it, but you're just forecasting things out. But going through the actual process of working with, um, so what I would say sophisticated investors, people who do this for a living. And that's something I'd never done. I felt I was really intimidated and I was really nervous that I was getting screwed or they knew a lot more about what they were doing, which they did. And I, there are things in hindsight that I wish I'd done differently, but now I know that. Um, but you know, I'd say if you, if you're willing to really go and start, raise money or try to start a business like you have to be willing to put some skin in the game and that's either quitting your job that you currently have um taking some of your own savings to get it started um and then when you actually raise money like it's it's if you haven't done it before it'll be super stressful because it's hundreds of pages of documents and it's english but it's its own version of english which is lawyer english um and you know things you just never get so uh, that was probably one of the more stressful periods of time too, was actually going through that paperwork. Now, uh, what, what's been the biggest challenge so far for you as an entrepreneur and how have you kind of uh, overcome those challenges? Uh, it's hard to come up with just one thing that's a challenge. <laughs> um, I mean, it's the life cycle of the business. I, I, I was just talking to a, another entrepreneur and friend about this last week. Well, actually, that first year of 2016, I made a a conscious decision not to try to, to generate revenue before we were ready, right? So everything was about developing technology, getting our platform, getting our, you know, the product ready to go to market, which in hindsight, you think of like when we went to market, how unready we really were, but we had spent, you know, seven, eight, nine months, you know, developing this technology. And that was actually a really, really fun time, right? Because you don't have operating issues, you don't have you have no revenue pressure, right? Because um, you've taken it off. Um, so the first year it was raising capital, taking initial risk, right? Year two was, uh, I call the dark days, uh, <laughs> where it's like, okay, press release, we're live. At, like everybody's gonna flock to us and do business. Um, and it just didn't happen the first you know, six to eight months. And I just remember having like the weekly business meetings, sales meetings, and it was, uh, they were uncomfortable to put it to put it lightly. Like, where's the revenue? Um, and, and then um, we did start to get revenue and start to scale the business. Um, and then, you know, I'd say that year and a half of half of seventeen, half of eighteen was just really like, okay, let's grow, let's let's let attract great employees. We moved into an office. We we did the kind of things where it was like really cool and fun, and went from five employees to now we have close to fifty employees, maybe even sixty. I lost count. Um, <laughs> But it's just very different, right? So the discipline for me is to not try to be everything to everybody now, right? So, I mean, before you walked in here, the sales meeting was wrapping up and I'm very much, a, I've always been a leader of sales, but I don't run the sales meeting, right? I've got a chief client officer and that's his job. And I don't want to, I don't want him to feel like I'm looking over his shoulder on everything. He's got that responsibility and I, I don't sit in on every product meeting or everything because that's, that's someone else's job, right? So I think that's a different phase of business now where 
um, if you hire the right people, you have to let them do the job, right? And then I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs where in year three or four, once they've started to see success, you're actually, you say like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? <laughs> like, like, what's my job now? Um, and I don't, I, I still call some friends. I'm like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And they say, just, if your business is growing, you got great people, just, you know, part of it's just being the evangelist, attract more people, help the, help the, the other lieutenants in the business succeed. Um, but, um, you know, it is a challenge because you want to step in, right? Or helicopter in right. whenever you want to. But, um, so I think that's the challenge now is just dealing with these different, you know, stages of business. And now it's, you know, how do you grow faster? What new markets do you want to go into? And, but not be this crazy distracted CEO that's like, okay guys, this next quarter, let's think of this new idea and let them do their jobs. So it sounds like you were able to, to build yourself your own CEO support group and, and get some help from others. Is that okay? yeah, it's, un, it's unofficial, right? right. I, but I think anybody who's had success or failure, because often you have the failure success um, cycles. Um, yeah, I think even when you compete with people in your industry, you get to have those one-on-one -on -one moments with them. Like, what did you do at this time? Or, or how did you do that? Because I think entrepreneurs need support because at times it can be pretty lonely where even if you have executives, um, they're not really aware of everything that's going through um, the founder's brain. Um, they know a lot, right? But sometimes, you know, you can't share everything. So talking to other entrepreneurs, um, even if it's unofficial, I think is important. So, so last question is, um, what's the bis biggest piece of advice you'd give another entrepreneur? And I know you're, you're early into this, but what's, what's the biggest maybe lesson or what, what kind of advice would you give to someone else who's saying, hey, now's my time? Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll do my best to keep it to one or two. One is um, cash is absolutely king, right? So if you do raise money, um, do not waste it, right? So don't run out of money. That's the most important thing. Um, I'm not a big fan of some of the um, opulent use of cash that comes in and these you know, crazy money that comes in and, okay, let's go spend it. Um, let's, uh, so you can actually grow fast and be and have cash and be bootstrapped um, as a DNA altogether. Right? So just be really capital efficient, especially early on. Um, two is hiring great people and the culture that you create around accountability and autonomy for those first 10, 15 employees, super important, right? Because you will never scale your business if you're not able to attract great people who feel like they can actually do their jobs. Um, so I say hire slow, fire fast, right? I didn't make that up, that's been said before, but it's so, so true, like always be recruiting, always be looking for great people to join the company because the Technology is great, use a founder might be great, but ultimately the business is gonna need a lot of really good people. And um, just like you have capital dilution as you bring in money, as you grow, you can have talent dilution, right? Where you're not as focused on the quality of the next hire and the next hire. And so just be capital efficient and hire the best people you can and get bad people out of the company really quickly when they come in. Great.